Hey guys, Private Jack. This is part two in my QCI series. I was going to try and do this all up in just two videos, but that's not going to happen. The process is just too involved. So in this video, what we're going to talk about is just setting the model up in Blender and getting it ready to start looking for coordinates. And then in the third video, what we'll do is we'll get into actually finding the coordinates, writing the QC and compiling the model. So right now I said in part one, we were going to work with a particular model and that model is going to be this one. Okay, this is a model that was uploaded by Gunchap Red and I helped him get this model set up for porting to Source Filmmaker. However, if you watched part one of this series, you saw that the texturing in the eyes just doesn't work with bones to control the eyes. We had all the texture moving and what we want to do is we want to maintain this kind of a shadow area in the uh, back of the eye uh, or on the eyeball from the eyelashes and probably use QC eyes for this. So we're going to use this particular model. So I'm going to subscribe to it. We don't need the rig right now. Rig is for if you bring it into Source Filmmaker. Continue. So I've subscribed it. Now I'm going to launch Source Filmmaker so it will download. Create a session, load a map, which should bring up our SFM download queue. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. And had there been a box pop up here regarding replacing materials or textures and that kind of thing, I would have clicked yes to all on every time it popped up. Now that the files are downloaded, I'm going to click OK. And I can cancel that and close out of Source Filmmaker. Files are going to be located in the SFM workshop folder. And most of the workshop items that you look at down at the bottom of the page will give you the actual path of where the model files live. In order to get this thing into Blender, I have to decompile it. And I'm going to use Crowbar to decompile. So I'm going to open up Crowbar. I'm going to open up a file explorer session. I'm going to select the decompile tab in Crowbar and then head off to my Source Filmmaker, Game, Workshop, Models. And then here I see the path to where that model should be residing. So it's in Gunchap Red. Characters, Fire Emblem, Cynthia, and here are the model files. I'm going to pick up that MDL file and I'm just going to drag it and drop it right here in the model input. Now I want this thing to go off to uh, my desktop into a folder. So I'm going to click on the output to browse, point to my desktop, Create a new folder. I'm going to name this uh, Cynthia Exports. I'm going to drill into that folder. I'm going to create another folder. And I'm going to call this one SMD Decompiles just so that if I do decide to export SMDs from Blender, I'm not going to get the SMD versions mixed up. Okay, I'm going to drill into this SMD decompiles and open that. Now this is where that model will, ex uh, will uh, decompile to. What do I want from the model? Well, I want the QC file for one, so that's checked on. I'm going to set up the texture groups, if there are any, on single lines between groups. I'm going to change uh, the uh, material, change materials. Oh, I only want the 
materials that are actually going to change in the texture groups. And I don't know if this model has things like weapon bones that aren't actually attached to any type of mesh. So I'm going to bring in defined bones as well. Reference, I'm going to remove the path information from the material file names in the materials uh, tab. And then over here, if I was going to be compiling this for uh, Gary's Mod, TF, uh, any of the source games, and I thought that it might have LOD files, I would want to bring those in. Same thing with the physics mesh. If I thought if I was compiling for a different game other than Source Film Maker, and I thought that this thing had a physics mesh, I would check that on. Source Film Maker doesn't use LODs, and it doesn't really have any type of physics, so I don't need these if I'm doing it for SFM alone. So I can leave those unchecked. I'm going to want the vertex animation file, the VTA, in case there is any type of vertex animations on the model. And the procedural bones, things like jiggle bones, I'm going to want them defined in the QC as well. So this stuff is all going to be defined in the QC. And then if there are any animations on the model, uh, like in sequences, I want those animations brought out as well. The purpose for this is basically if I, I want to be able to recompile this model to the same status and state that it is currently in um, SFM now or whatever, okay, if I'm decompiling a model, so that uh, I'm just, the model is going to be the same with the exception it, that I'm adding QCIs to it. This is kind of important if you're trying to fix models from Gmod that you're trying to port over to Source Film Maker. And we'll talk about that later, maybe in the next video. So once I have that all selected, I'm going to hit decompile. Decompile is finished. I can close off Crowbar. And if I look in my export folder now, I'm going to find that I have the SMD body groups, the anims, and I have a QC file. Getting this thing into Blender, too easy. All we do is open up Blender. Now I've got Blender open here and I've got screencast keys turned on so you can see what my mouse button pushes are and what keys I'm pressing on the keyboard. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the cube and I'm going to press X and delete it. I have source uh, Blender source tools installed and enabled so I can import SMDs, I can import DMX files, and I can import VTA files. And I can import QC files. So I'm going to go File, Import, Find Source Engine, SMD, VTA, DMX, QC, click on that. Point this to the folder that I just exported that model into, or decompiled that model into, and I'm going to select QC because when I bring this model into Blender I want it to bring all the elements with it into Blender. So using the QC file it will compile uh, it will blend in all the SMD body groups it'll bring bring in the VTA files all the rest of that good stuff based on what is written in the QC. I want to import the animations I don't want to cl create collections because each of these SMDs will actually create a collection within the outliner. I just want this stuff all in one collection. Now, up access, uh, append to target. I don't have anything in scene right now, so I'm not trying to append it to any type of armature. So. I don't have to worry about this particular blend append mode. Up axis, this is which way the model was actually compiled. If it was standing on the floor with the head up towards the ceiling, that is Z up. 
most TF characters are compiled Y up so that their head is down here on the Y uh, axis. If I want this thing to stand up on the floor when I bring it into Blender, I'm going to select Y up. But like I say, this particular model is in Z up access. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave that the way it is. I'm trying to get my cursor back to world origin here. There we go. Rotation mode, I want Euler instead of the uh, quaternion type method. And when I import this thing, I don't want those standard SMD bones, you know, the big round spheres, because it's going to convolute my ability to see. So I'm going to change this to default. Once that's done, all I have to do now is click on import, let it whirl around a little bit, and poof, here's my model. So now that this is in Blender, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the actual shape of the bones because I like Blender octahedral bones. I'm going to select the armature, come over here, select the armature property panels tab, down here to viewport, and I'm going to change it from stick to octahedral. So now I've got the standard blender bones. I can see which way they're pointed. I know what's up, what's down, and that kind of thing. Not really important when we're working with QCIs, but it just makes it easier to understand what's happening within the model. Okay. I'm going to go over here to the outliner now, and there are certain elements that we have to set up on this model in order to do QCIs. First thing is, is to find out, find out what, uh, how this, the orbs or the, the, the mesh for the eyeballs is formed in the model. This particular model, when we compiled it, we compiled the eyeballs as orbs. And we also made a separate body group for them. Most models' eyes will already be part of the face. For DMX exporting, this is not a problem. However, for SMD exporting, it could be a problem. And we'll get into that in a little bit. QCIs are created with two textures, one on top of the other. So this mesh only has to be a single layer mesh. It doesn't have to be an orb on top of an orb on top of an orb on top of an orb or a leaf mesh on top of leaf mesh. It's just one single, one single little mesh. Okay, one single layer of mesh. I'm going to hide it. I'll come back here. So if I look inside the eye, there's no more mesh behind this front layer of mesh. That's the back side of the eye of this orb. Okay. On TF2 characters, what they have is some sort of a mesh that actually forms the shape of the eye for an eyeball. And it's a concave type mesh where uh, the eye wrote, uh, just moves back and forth on this outside layer. Okay, so now that we know what the eyeballs look like, each eyeball has to have its own material. So I'm going to select the mesh that contains the eyes. I'm going to go into edit mode Come down here to the Materials tab, and currently both of these eyes are using the same material. What I have to do is set up materials for each eyeball. So I'm going to select the left eyeball. I'm going to come over here to the Materials tab. I'm going to click this plus button. I'm going to create a new material, 
and I'm going to name this eyeball left. Once I have that material created, I'm going to make sure I have this left eyeball selected and I'm going to click Assign. So now if I clear off the selection and I come here to the pupils and click Select, only that, left, or only that right eyeball is going to actually light up. Deselect that. The left eyeball, if I select that one, only the mesh that is involved with the left eyeball is going to light up. Once I have that done, what I can do is I can come back here to this original material and just rename it to eyeball right. So now I have my two materials set up for the eyeballs. I have eyeball right and I have eyeball left. Now these are going to be important elements of the QC when we get into writing the QC. Okay, we're going to pop out of this for a second and we're going to look at a different model. This particular model uses separate mesh for the pupils. Okay, it's got a, if I grab that and pull it out here, that is the, 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 the iris and the pupil on a separate mesh. The whites of the actual eyes is another mesh. I don't know if that's going to come out. Yeah, there it is. And this mesh is actually extruded back into the eye socket. Or the eye socket is extruded back into the head. This model will not accept QCIs very well because everything would have to be displayed on this mesh that is here in the back. In order to make this type of model work, what I would have to do is I would have to create a mesh, uh, uh, a mesh for this particular part of the eye and give it a material, kind of like this. See how this is now pretty much aligned with the eye. This is pretty much the same as a uh, TF2 type character. If I select that, I'm just going to pull it out. And that is all that mesh is. This is pretty much like a TF2 character eye. However, the TF2 character eye has more geometry to it. I've just made a face here just to demonstrate what I was talking about. But this eye, this mesh actually just rings around the actual eyeball and is a fill here instead of being extruded back into the eye. This would work for QCIs. This would not work well for QCIs. Put it all back and there we go. Now we can come back here. This is what I was talking about here. We want to make sure that the eyeball actually fills the eye socket as well so that there are no gaps that we can see through. Because if we can see through and see the back side of mesh on the head, then that mesh is going to be uh, see-through and basically we'll be able to see the back wall through the eyeball if it's not actually sealed in a good manner. Okay, now that we've got that set up, in order to work with QCIs, the best thing to do is to actually texture the eyeballs, okay? And to texture the eyeballs, we're going to require textures. 
Well, if you've downloaded a uh, model and decompiled it, the textures are in VTA or VT, VTF format. And these need to be converted to a format that is, up, is uh, uh, loadable by Blender. The way that I do this is now I'm going to go into the actual model, uh, the materials folder, and usually most models will be set up so that the materials will be in the same type of folder path under the materials tab. So I'm going to come back here to the workshop, go into materials, and it would be models, but you may have to actually go looking for them. Material models, Gunchap Red, Characters, Fire Emblem, Cynthia, and here are the VTFs. Now to convert VTFs, you have two options. VTF Edit, which is no, uh, and NIMS Tools is no longer available on the website. Uh, the NEMS Tools website is no longer available on the web, but there is a archive out there. Just Google for VTF, uh, no, NEMS Tools archives, and go to the Game Banana uh, site and download the RAR file that's there. Or you can use uh, GIMP if you have the VTF add-on installed and enabled. I prefer to use VTF Edit simply due to the fact that it allows me to convert whole folders of VTFs rather than with GIMP where I have to do it one at a time. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I, now that I know where the materials are, I'm going to come in here, uh, Tools, Convert Folder. I'm going to surf to the actual uh, download, or the uh, where it's downloaded, which would be Steam, Steam Apps, Workshop, Materials, Models, Gunshop Red, Characters, Fire Emblem, Cynthia. Select that folder, click OK. And then I'm going to output it into this folder on my desktop. And I'm going to create a new folder called textures. Come on. And select that folder, click OK. Now, to convert, what we want to do is we want to come from VTF to a format that we want to use. I prefer PNGs simply due to the fact that they allow transparencies, they're compressed, and basically they're, they're fast to convert. Tagas have a tendency of being a pain in the butt. BMPs and JPEGs don't support transparency, so I usually select PNG, and then what I tell it is I want to convert all files with a star dot VTF file extension. And if there are any other folders within this particular folder, I want you to walk through them and see if there are VTFs in them and well and convert them at the same time. Click on convert. And exiting D, it, it process is finished. Now, if I come into that exports folder, I will have into my textures folder, I will see that I have the textures in PNG format. Okay, we know that QCIs require two textures. We require a texture for the back of the eye, like the, the whites of the eye, and we require an iris. So, if we look at these particular textures, we're going to find that, yeah, we included the eyes white in this particular one, but we only have a combination of the eyes white and the actual iris on the texture. And this is the texture that 
this model is currently using and has a skin to switch to this one. What we need to do is we need to split this iris off of these two textures and make them their own texture. The way we do that is with GIMP or Photoshop or anything else that supports that. I use GIMP because it's free. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these three files. I want the eyes white. and We included the eyes white in the model when we actually built it. If, I, if this wasn't here, then what I would have to do is split the iris out and then repair the eyes white material so that it worked. So I'm going to grab these three files. I'm going to put them up here on this little GIMP symbol, drop them there. And this is going to open those three files in GIMP. Now, because I'm using Camtasia, GIMP uh, uh, shortcut keys don't work properly. Normally what I would do is, in this particular case, I would grab a hold of that texture. I would zoom in on it. I would use the ellipse select tool, select the iris so that I'm not picking up any of that fuzzy outside stuff. Probably about there, about there, about there, and about there. Hit Control C and then hit Control Shift V and create a new texture for it. Okay, I can do the same thing with this one. Use the ellipse tool. Make the selection so that I'm not selecting any of that fuzzy stuff on the outside. That's about right. And that's about right. Maybe I can come down another couple here. And that looks pretty good. Like that. Control C. Control Shift V, create new image. However, these two new images are not scaled to the proper size that they need to be. Valve textures need to be 250 or uh, need to be to the power of two. So, and the original textures were 256 by 256. And if I want this to float over top of the actual eyes white material properly, these two textures need to be 256 by 256 as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the brown eyes first, come here into image. Uh, do, 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 do. Why are you not allowing? There we go. Select canvas size. I'm going to change the canvas size to 256 by 256. I'm going to place the iris in the middle of the actual new sized uh, texture. Make sure it's filled with transparency. Click resize. And voila, there it is. Do the same thing with the blue eye. Image, canvas size, 256 by 256. We're going to center it, filled with transparency, and resize. Now, this may look like it's proper, but in actual fact, it is not. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that the actual texture that we created is still located in the same place if we want the eyes to look the same as what they did on the original model 
yada, yada, yada. The way that I do that is normally I would just pull the uh, uh, newly created texture on top of the old texture and then position this into the proper place. Unfortunately, Camtasia doesn't allow me to do that, so I got to do it the hard way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the brown eye, uh, iris. I'm going to hit Control C. I'm going to select the original texture. I'm going to clear the selection. And I'm going to hit Control V. It's going to create a floating selection layer. I'm going to right click on that and select new layer. So now I've got that brown eye on this layer with the transparency and I have the original texture here. And as you can see, it's not positioned correctly according to the original texture. So I'm going to select the move tool now, make sure I have that layer selected and just use my down arrow keys and my right and left arrow keys and try to position this pretty much so that it is in the proper place. Once that's done, I can turn, I can uh, actually delete the original layer. And then with this particular texture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that layer and I am going to rescale it to the image size so that this actual texture takes up the whole image space. That's got the brown eye done. Now I'm going to do the blue eye the same way. Control copy, Control C select the original image, clear the selection, select none, control V, floating layer section to new layer. And again, you can see that it's not quite there. Hit the move, use my up, down arrows. Oops, come on, select the layer, use the up down arrows to move the iris into its proper location, right about there. Select the old layer, right click, delete layer, and not mask, delete layer, and then right click on the layer and layer to image size. And voila, there we have our two um, textures the way that they are, that the way that they need to be. And I can delete these two here because they are not in the proper place. Okay. Now, setting this thing up one step further, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually. Uh, am I? No, I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to file save this. Uh, export as rather. And I'm going to put that in the uh, export textures. I'm going to call this Iris Brown PNG. Hit export. Export. Select this one. File, export as, and this is going to be iris blue. For now, export. And now what I can do <coughs> is I can come into Blender and set up some textures and materials. So here I'm going to split the screen, go into my shader editor, OK, 
Okay. I'm going to use Shift A. I'm going to add an input. And this is going to be a UV map switched to the actual UV map that I want to use. I'm going to add Shift A, add a, oh, where are you? Vector. And I'm going to add a mapping vector. I'm going to connect this UV down here to the vector input node. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift A. I'm going to add two texture nodes, image texture nodes, one there. Shift A, texture, image texture node, like that. I'm going to take this UV output and plug it into this vector input on this image. I'm going to take this vector output and plug it into this one. And then I'm going to open, go to the desktop, go into my Cynthia output or uh, exports textures, and I'm going to select the eyes white material. And in this one, I'm going to open, go to that same folder. And select the eye brown, uh, the iris brown texture. I'm going to select these and just move them off to the right a little bit. I'm going to add another node, Shift Add, and this is going to be a color node. It's going to be a mixed RGB node. I'm going to leave it as a mix. I'm going to pull the color out of this, the whites uh, texture node, plug it into color one. I'm going to take the color node out of the iris and plug it into color two. And then I'm going to take the alpha channel out of the iris and plug it into the factor. I'm going to connect this color node to that base color node and let down. Nothing happened. Reason why is because I am still in solid mode and what I need to do is I need to switch the view mode to material preview. So now I've got one done and to do the other one all I have to do is pick up, do a press B, box select everything, do a control C to copy this node tree, select the right eye, do a control V to drop it in here. Control V, why are you not, oh, the reason why it's not working is I didn't turn on use nodes. Select that, delete, control V, and poof. Now I've got both eyes. And if I want to switch them up a little bit, I could come in here and I could switch this one to the blue. So now I got a blue and a brown eye. <laughs> okay, that has that set up. Now, one last thing before we go off and start looking for vectors and all the rest of that good stuff for our QC is there's one more change that we have to make in Blender. I'm going to come into object mode and I'm going to come over here to the scenes property panel. Here you're going to find units and this is how things are measured in Blender. If I hover my cursor over the 3D viewer and press N, I open up the transform menus. I'm just going to pull this and close off this because I don't need that shader editor anymore. And basically, if I come up here to item, all of these are vectors and uh, actually uh, all of 
this location stuff is measured by however these units are set. Same with uh, rotations and scale uh, dimensions and that kind of thing. When we actually work with QCIs, the actual unit system that we want to use is the blender unit system. Currently, mine is using the metric system, and I believe it's a default uh, when you install Blender. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to none. And what none means is uh, we're using Blender units. So anywhere I click in this screen here and move my 3D cursor, this value, oh, it didn't change. That's because what we're looking at is at the item. If I come down here to view and down here into the 3D cursor, these values, anywhere I click that 3D cursor to, are actual Blender units in world space here in Blender. So if I click on the forehead, and also I have my cursor set that if I click a piece of mesh, the cursor will sit on the outside of the mesh that is clicked. It doesn't bury itself inside the model. Okay. So now these are in Blender units and the QC that we are going to write likes Blender units. If this was set to metric, it would be a different value altogether. And if it's set to imperial, we're into actual feet and inches. And Blender uh, uh, Source Tools does not like feet and inches. Okay, so we're going to set the unit measure to none so that we're using Blender units when we start selecting things on our model. Now, I think I already mentioned the model itself should be in its final state and QCIs being the last thing that we're going to do. Each eyeball that we're going to actually configure has to have its own material. When we start getting the coordinates from Blender, we want Blender to be in Blender units. And the eyeballs that we're going to actually configure need to be a single layer of mesh because we are going to use two different textures an eyes white for the back side of the texture and an iris texture for the actual texture that's going to float over top of the eye white. What we'll end up with is something that looks like Now, what material do I have selected? The eye right. Watch the eye right. This is what this is the effect that we're going after with QCIs. That texture floating over top of the eyes white texture on the eye. Okay. So that's what we want to achieve at the end of the next video. So with that, we've got the model pretty much set up for working with to find the coordinates now. It's the last model that, it's the last export that we want to do, uh, want to do. And basically, uh, we're now ready, good to go. 
So I'm going to close this video off and get into actually determining textures for the QC, the QC writing, and the actual start the compile process to make sure that the eyes work properly. With that, I'm going to say Private Jack out.